select the major product of the following series of reactions. So we want to go through this step by step to see what we're forming at each stage of this mechanism. So what we are starting with is an alkyl bromide, and specifically the bromine is attached to a primary carbon. So we're going to call this a primary alkyl bromide. And what we're reacting this with in the first step is triphenylphosphine. And so triphenylphosphine, your phosphorus has a lone pair of electrons and those are three benzene rings. But with this lone pair of electrons, it's a good nucleophile and it can do an SN2 attack on a primary alkyl halide. So we can do that SN2 substitution. So here where we had the bromine, we now have a bond to phosphorus which still has its three phenyl rings. And since it kind of gave up electrons, you can see that in this attack, it's giving up those electrons to form the covalent bond. It now has a positive charge. Um, and we have bromide as a counter ion. So this is a salt. And so what we're gonna do with this in the next step is we're treating this with butyl lithium. And so butyl lithium does react similar to a Grignard reagent. So if you had a carbonyl, right, if you were just to put this in with your cyclohexanone, it might attack the carbonyl. Um, it's also a really strong base. And that's what it's being used for in this case. So this is, a, we'll, we'll take, take a note, this is a strong base and a strong nucleophile. Um, if you have a competition between something like this acting as a base or a nucleophile, though, that acid-base chemistry is going to take place faster. And so with this positively charged phosphorus, it does make the hydrogens on the next door carbon atom more acidic. And so this is going to act as a base in this case. So we can draw out the structure of this butyl lithium. So we could think of this really as being like a carbanion where we have that negative charge and lithium as a positive charge. And so this is going to remove one of these two protons. It really doesn't matter which one. And so we can remove that. And what we're forming here is an illid. So we've got a negative charge on the carbon and we still have a positive charge on that phosphorus, right? And so this, this illid has a resonance structure. So we could also draw this in its resonance form where we see the double bond between the carbon and the phosphorus. And this structure is known as an illid. And so what this is used for is for a Wittig reaction. Um, so Wittig reactions, or these illids form in a Wittig reaction, an alkene when they react with a carbonyl, an aldehyde or a ketone specifically. So we are going to, if we want to draw the product, we can envision that this carbon is simply going to replace that oxygen exactly where it is um, as an alkene. So we get really, really good control over our stereochemistry in this reaction. And we have seen this mechanism in a previous video. So you can take a look back at that if you want to see exactly how it works. But we're going to practice here is how we know how to snap this carbon exactly where that one is. And so let's practice that. So double bond to, let's number these carbons. So what we're saying is that double bond is going to be to what's carbon one, and then we're going to put the rest of the chain on there. So one, two, three, four. And we don't want to miss the fact that I've just long numbered the longest carbon chain. We also have a methyl group there on carbon three. So make sure we still have that. So it's an easy snap together once you recognize what your two pieces are in this reaction. And we can see that this alkene specifically that we formed is our option D.